welcome to Caterpillar Cross Stitch. My name is Sean, and today I'm going to be sharing with you some top tips on things you should avoid when cross stitching. If you're new around here, welcome. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. And if you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up so we know that we should create more content like this. With that said, let's get into number one. My first tip on what you should avoid when stitching is making sure all your stitches run the same way. On the left here, you can see that these stitches run different ways. If we look at the top left, you can see that the first three stitches all run from the bottom left to the top right. So the top stitch runs from the bottom left to the top right. Then we get to the fourth stitch and you can see that the top stitch runs from the bottom right to the top left. Now if we can compare that to the right stitches, all these stitches are running the same way. So the top stitch is running from the bottom left to the top right. And you can really see a difference in how neat our stitches are. Another thing you can notice is the coverage. The coverage of these stitches is a lot better than these stitches here on the left. So what does that mean when you are actually stitching? So that you get an understanding of what that looks like whilst I'm stitching, I've gone ahead and secured my thread onto this 14 count Ada, and I have used the loop method, which I'm sure some of you will be familiar with. If you don't know what the loop method is, I will link down below a video so you can go and check that out. And so what I've done is I have just put one thread into the square. So I've gone from the top left to the bottom right. Now, because I have started this way on my fabric, I need to make sure that all of my bottom threads, so my bottom half of the stitch, runs the same way. So what that looks like is I'm going to put my needle back in the top left of the square, pull my thread through, make sure it's secured okay at the back, and then I'm gonna go back down into the bottom right of the square, and I'm gonna pull my thread through, and that is now my second stitch. And as you can see, they're both running the same way. If I do another one back in the top left, pull the thread through and back down into the bottom right of the square. And again, you can see all of my bottom leg of the, of the stitch is all running the same way. So if I was to go back over to complete my stitch, I will start in the top right, pull my thread through, and back down into the left bottom hole of the square. And now I have secured my first stitch. So I'm gonna go back to the top right, pull my thread through, back down, and pull the thread through. And if we do that again, so we go back into the top right, pull the thread through, back into the left, we now have three squares that have been stitched, all running the same way. Before moving on to the next tip, I just want to mention that Caterpillar Cross Stitch does have a number of free patterns that you can get access to for free. All you need to do is head over to the website and sign up to the newsletter and you'll be able to get access to the free patterns instantly. My next tip on what you should avoid is running threads behind your fabric where no stitches will be on the final picture. And the reason for that is that you can cause shadows running behind your fabric. And this normally applies when you're using a light fabric, such as this white 14 count Ada, and a dark thread. So what I mean by that is I'm going to use this little motif as an example and this comes from this Hello Pumpkin tree which is one of the Caterpillar Cross Stitch seasonal trees. And the next area that I want to use this blue is in this little flower motif here. So I'm going to move it up closer to the camera so you can see. The example I'm showing you here is on 28 count even weave. And this is the little motif that we have currently stitched on our hoop. 
and I want to move across and start to stitch this motif here. So to start our flower motif, it's four squares to the right of this bottom right square. And I'm gonna pull my thread through, and as you can see, I have carried my thread from this motif across. Now the problem with doing that is that when this piece is framed and finished and is ready to display, you're going to see the thread running along this gap here, and it's going to cause a shadow in your piece. So to avoid that, instead of carrying our thread across, we should run our thread behind the motif to secure the thread in place, cut the thread Cut the thread and start again in our new area. There is an alternative method if your design allows it. So I have this example here where I have two squares and I now want to create this square on the left side of this square. Now instead of ending my thread, I'm going to run my thread in the back of my design where there is already a stitch on the front. And this is gonna avoid any of the shadows and the threads running in the back of my, th of my fabric. So I currently have my thread attached here and I'm gonna run my thread along the back of my work in this direction. And this is gonna cross where this crosses here. So I'm gonna pull my thread through And then I'm now able to start my next square and I've not caused any shadows in my fabric. My next tip in what to avoid when cross stitching is stitching too close to the edge of the fabric as it may cause you some difficulties when fully finishing it. You want to leave a couple of inches or even more depending on how you plan to finish your piece so that there's plenty of fabric to play around with to get that final finish. On Sally's designs you can see that there are these little arrows here at the top on this horizontal line and also here on this vertical line and on the pattern there is a red line that runs all the way down and all the way across. And where the lines meet is the center of your pattern. Once you've found the center of your pattern, you then need to find the center of your fabric. And to do that, you fold your fabric in half and press down on the edge that you have just folded. Then fold again and press down on the edges you have folded. Then once you open your fabric, that will create a vertical line and a horizontal line. Where the lines meet is the center of your fabric. And this indicates the center of your design as well. So where the two lines meet on the pattern, it's the same as where the two lines meet on your fabric. To decide on what size fabric you will need for a design, you need to have a look at the finished piece size. So on this example, if we were to stitch the Grace Wreath monogram on 14 count, it would be seven inches by seven inches. So that is the size of the final piece. So if we had our fabric, it would be seven inches by seven inches on the fabric. To work out how much extra fabric you would need to take into consideration the extra fabric you will need around the corn, around the um, around your design. If you want to have three inches around your piece, you will have three inches on the left plus the seven inches, which is the, your actual finished piece plus the three inches on the right. So that would mean you would need a 13 inch fabric going horizontal. 
And then because it's the same vertically, you would also need three inches at the top, seven inches for your actual uh, design and three inches at the bottom. So that means your fabric, you would need a 13 inch by a 13 inch piece of fabric. My last tip to share with you on what you should avoid when cross-stitching is eating and drinking whilst stitching. Now, I am someone who likes to stitch in the evening and relax watching the TV and I may have a cup of tea and a biscuit, but I always like to make sure that I have washed my hands before I pick my project back up. A lot of my projects that I work on are light fabric and the grease and dirt that you can obtain from handling any kind of food can then transfer onto the fabric. So the best thing to do is to make sure you wash your hands before you pick your project back up. So that's it from us here at Caspian the Cross Stitch. I hope you have enjoyed this video and that the top tips that I've shared with you will help you with your cross stitching projects. Until next time, I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.